fellow travelers, after a while of not attending, I ain't here. I was here 2018, not 2019, or the other way around. I can't remember exactly, but I'm back at the one, the only, San Diego Comic Con. Alright, so what's happening now, I'm, I'm really trying to make my way to the Toinami uh, booth to get the Robotech uh, uh, release. And taking a lot of people here are basically doing that. Like, when the exhibit hall first opened, especially on day one, uh, stopping in the middle of the walkways, looking around is not the best thing to do. Because people, especially right when it opens, are heading somewhere to buy something. And some of these are limited edition. Uh, there's only so many made. And if you miss it, you miss it. And you gotta buy it online from scalpers and uh, you're paying uh, crazy prices. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm trying to get to the, again, to not me to buy the, uh, the Robotech figures. A set of five, which I will be splitting two with my friend. One, I'll probably resell for a fair price on mine. I'm not gonna sculpt someone. And uh, yeah, get my uh, Max and Maria Sterling figures. Very nice. Oh my god. That's awesome. That's a good mashup, guys. Love it. Hey, so here I am back at Comic Con and I've been having a blast. It's pretty awesome. I got my uh, purchase for the day. Um, definitely gonna buy some stuff tomorrow. Uh, but for today, that was my budget. A uh, cool thing happened today, though. Um, I got to meet Rod Roddenberry. And for those of you who uh, are Star Trek fans, know who it is. Those of you who don't know who he is, who are not Star Trek fans, uh, he's uh, Gene Roddenberry's son. Um, that's as close as I, I'm ever going to get to to meeting the man because, you know, he passed away when I was in high school. Uh, but wow, I mean, what, what an experience, honestly. Um, because I blew my budget for the day on this, I wasn't able to buy a, uh, a Wrath of Khan cell that he was autographing. Uh, so you could buy him there. It was just a little out of my range for today. Uh, so I st still stood in line. I was the third in line. Um, and it was just to meet him. And I told him, you know, it's like I, I blew my budget for the day. Uh, but I always wanted to meet you and uh, shook his hand. He asked me what I do and I told him uh, that he mentioned that he uh, was a red shirt in one of the episodes of uh, Star Trek Continues. And I told him that I did visual effects for the show. And he thanked me for what I did on the show, um, which is a lot more gratitude uh, than I ever got from the person who put that show together. Trust me, I did a lot of volunteer work on that. Um, and that's the most thank you I've ever gotten from anyone for what I did there on that show, on that uh, web uh, fan series. So it was a, a nice little moment there, um, being able to meet him, uh, say hi to him, tell him how long I've been wanting to meet him. And, you know, he was cool that I blew my budget on, uh, on a toy collectible that I bought this morning. So he completely understood the, uh, the nerd dynamic of... Uh, of wanting to meet him so that was a nice little moment uh the rest of the convention has been great i mean a lot of cosplayers uh honestly it doesn't feel crowded uh, as i thought it was gonna feel 
uh, I stopped attending Anime Expo. Uh, 2019 was my last year I went, and I said I wasn't going to go back for 2020. Then the pandemic happened, so I didn't go back anyway. This year reopened, and I didn't go back, and I'm kind of glad it didn't. I didn't go because I seen pictures, and it was crazy packed. The fire department had to step in and stop letting people in. I do not get that feeling here at all. There's plenty of room uh, in the exhibit hall. Um, no, it's nothing like Anime Expo. So they know their capacity and they cap out ticket sales early enough to where it's not going to get overcrowded. And you got like so much around here where a lot of the event kind of uh, spills onto. So it kind of, it, it people go all over the place and it doesn't get crazy crowded here. And that's what I like about it. So it's been great. Day one, uh, I'm gonna be back tomorrow. Um, probably gonna be here for half a day tomorrow uh, and then head back home. But uh, yeah, I'm actually thinking I'm gonna call it a day here pretty soon. For maybe in a, another hour walking around and let's see what happens. See what I, who I run, run into. Run into my friend Brett from uh, back east. That was nice, so let's see who else I run into. So done for Comic-Con for the day, so I'm here at the uh, Spring Street Station. Um, still not a lot of people know about it. There are uh, some people to go to Comic-Con to park here because it's free. There's security and it's only 250 to get there, 250 to get back. So way better than some of the other options. Hey, so here I am in the car ready to head back to LA so I'm gonna get down here a little earlier tomorrow so I will greet you all soon awesome hey fellow travelers so this is day two here at comic-con and I've just kind of been walking around I bought a uh, tiki mug a stormtrooper helmet tiki mug it was pretty cool um, just basically just gotten some stuff, but nothing uh, nothing big like yesterday. So just kind of looking around, walking around, uh, trying to hit some of the areas that I didn't get a chance to hit yesterday. Uh, the exhibit hall is just huge. And this year I'm really not focusing on panels. There wasn't anything really that interests me. Um, so kind of skipping that. But I mean, just the exhibit hall alone is like, I mean, look at this. There's so much stuff here to see and do. Um, you know, multi-genre, you know, I mean, you go from Legos, you know, things that a lot of us grew up with all the way to video games. And from that, it ranges retro to uh, current. So, yeah, anybody that uh, decides to come here, it's like there's going to be something for everyone. And this is one of the reasons I kind of like Comic-Con because it's multi-genre, multi-generational, uh, uh, I guess you can say. It goes again something for everyone star wars is cool it's fun uh, it also multi-generational but it's star wars uh, so celebration is all about star wars here you see star wars star trek uh you see anime you see horror you see everything so it's pretty cool and you know it's like you want a t-shirt it's like there's definitely plenty of vendors this is one of my favorite by the way styling online i've been buying stuff from them for years so every time I go to a convention, I kind of look for their booth. Sometimes I'll, it's like no luck. They don't uh, go to certain conventions, but uh, like this and uh, WonderCon and over back at uh, on the East Coast, uh, Wonder, uh, not WonderCon, but uh, MegaCon, they're always there. So whenever I need a new t-shirt to get my geek on, I kind of find their stuff. Very, very helpful to fulfill that part of of my geek, geeky needs.
So, uh, this is where I met Rod Roddenberry yesterday, that booth back there. It was a very nice experience. So, was, I talked about it earlier on this video. Um, yeah, that was, that was a nice moment. So I'm outside now and I'm just kind of catching some fresh air. It's actually a lot cooler today than yesterday. And uh, this is one of the spots that get, catches a lot of people to take their pictures because it's got the iconic San Diego Comic-Con International logo. And I mean, who doesn't want their picture there? It's like, come on, bragging rights. You're at San Diego Comic-Con. Why would you not take your picture there? And I just love being able to see people there. Sometimes they'll stop me to take their picture. It's, it's just pretty cool. to the ground when the winds are kicking up now i can hear down be like a lump all the soaring close to the ground So quick Comic Con story before I uh, I end my time here. So I was in there, and uh, Ozzy and Sharon Osborne were being escorted uh, toward the back. Uh, Ozzy was in the back of uh, like like a cart, one of those little cargo carts they have inside. And uh, I thought I was recording, and I wasn't. But kind of walked behind him. Everybody was chanting. It was pretty cool seeing Ozzy Osborne. Uh, one and only time I'm sure uh, that I'll, I'll see e either of them, but it was pretty cool. And then of course, when I thought I, I hit stop record, that's when it actually started recording. And then I realized I didn't catch any footage of Ozzy, but it was cool. I got to see Ozzy Osbourne. How cool is that right here at Comic-Con? And so my time at Comic-Con is coming to an end and uh, it's fine. It's fine, had a lot of fun, got to see a a lot of vendors, a lot of good stuff, but more swag. So, yeah, I think I didn't overspend. So, you say within my budget, so that's always good to plan ahead when attending these kind of events. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna start heading back uh, to where I parked the car and uh, head back home. And who knows if I'll be back next year? Maybe, maybe not. But other events other conventions down in on the road this year uh I'll probably do la comic-con if it's at the same time in december i'll probably be there so we'll see